Good evening. Welcome to Gay Liberation Network's live call-in show on Can TV. Uh, this is a live call-in, and the phone number is the bottom of your screen: three one two seven three eight ten sixty. And once we start our topic of the evening, we invite you to join us in the conversation. Absolutely. This evening, we have an expert on aging issues and uh, uh, and LGBT issues in our community here of Chicago, Paula Basta. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to be discussing LGBT aging and it, information that's helpful for everyone, and particularly uh, uh, gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, and transgender folks. Um, first, want to make sure that you know about our website and our upcoming event of North Halstead Market Days. Uh, gay Liberation Network will have a present at presence at the two-day street festival. Uh, you can look for us there on August 11th and 12th. And please do note our website of www.gayliberation.net for links to this television program as well as uh, ones in the past and many other events including what you just saw on your screen. So, um, to start out our evening, I want to you know, there's been some horror stories as well as people just have fears. Um, and sure. so I want to go into a couple of stories that uh, are typical of what many people experience. Um, Frank Vasquez uh, is the first story. Frank Vasquez and Robert Schwarzler shared a life together, a home, business, and other property for 28 years in rural Washington. But when Robert died suddenly, leaving behind no legal documents stipulating his wishes or identifying Frank as his partner, Frank was left without clear legal rights to their shared assets, including their home. There was a legal fight with family that ensued and lasted for many years. And so that's one item that it, that is a fear to people in, in couples and just in general that their wishes aren't uh, mm -hmm aren't uh, paid attention to. Uh, next is the the overriding issue uh, for for all people uh, about privacy, but particularly for transgendered and, yes. and transsexual yeah. folks. Um, you know, this quote from Jude Patton, um, who you'll see on your screen here, asking the question, you know, what am I going to do when I've been more or less private for all these years? and then my body is exposed and communicating hormone therapy as well as uh, being in close quarters with roommates and having many nurses um, working with you or just relying on care from other people and having to communicate much more openly about your identity um, you know is is a fear uh, that that everyone has uh, and it, it is more acute with uh, with LGBT folks uh, and LGBTs. Yes. So um, we're going to come, uh, so we're going to show you now uh, a couple of pages of resources that um, you might want to take down and we will be coming back to this later on in the program and talking about it in more detail and Paula maybe you can just talk through the resources that sure. are on the screen. 
The resources on the screen right now you're going to be seeing are one which is the Chicago Department of Family and Support Services where I work running the Northeast Levy Senior Center which is on the northeast side of Chicago at Lawrence and Damon. There you see our website but also we are the senior services component of that department and they're there um, for you to access any kind of services or programs that you as an aging person 60 or older in the city of Chicago can go ahead and, and access yourselves. The phone number there is 312-744-4016. Uh, Again, 312-744-4016. And that's for a host and variety of any information and as assistance that anyone 60 and older needs uh, may need. This, a minor yeah. correction on there to the website is cityofchicago.gov, G-O-V. Okay, thank you. Uh, then you have SAGE, uh, the SAGE program at the center on Halstead. You know we do have a SAGE program. SAGE, of course, is a national organization that stands for Services and Advocacy for GLBT Elders, and they are national, but they have a, a component at the center on Halstead, and we're very pleased and proud of that program. They're doing wonderful work there. The contact would be Britta Larson. She is there as well, and the website is www.centeronhalstead.org. And so they would also be a, a very big resource for you. They also have lunch three days a week there, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, which also is in partnership with the City of Chicago Department of, of Family and Support Services, the senior service component. So it's a wonderful resource. Then you have your legal documents, which are very important. These are two cases that really do um, show us how important the legal issues are to, ha to tackle that, to make sure that those are all... Um, going to be okay that in fact something doesn't happen like those two examples you gave us earlier but we have to make sure that those documents are are possible and are there for each person to access easily access yes and um, lambda legal dot mm -hmm. org has uh, further information on those specific Correct. documents and one particular one is a health care power of attorney right lambda legal dot org um, next, we've got a slide showing uh, some resources that are out there for uh, yeah. more education to go on in the community and people who are caregivers as well as educators to take advantage of so that um, we, the common folk, when we go into these uh, institutions and, and, um, and just go about our lives, that, that people are aware of our mm -hmm. needs and how to address sexuality in general and specifically LGBT issues. We will be coming back to all of these points later on in the program. Paula, can you, um, you know, just tell us about what makes, sure. uh, you know, specific LGBT issues out of aging? What's different for LGBT? Well, I was thrilled you put the website up, too, about the National LGBT Health and Aging um, senior center, center that's actually starting. It's a national thing that was funded by the, the Obama administration through the uh, Administration on Aging. So we have a very supportive uh, government right now and, a, and, a, and an agent, you know, the agency at the Administration on Aging is overarchingly the agency that deals with seniors 60 plus mm -hmm. on a national level. And so that they've carved out this National Center for LGBT Aging has been really, really important. So they start to talk about what makes us different in our aging experience. And there are things that, do, you know, that sort of separate us, and those are the things like social isolation. And, and in many ways, many of us are aging that we are uh, not close to our families, for example. So it's really hard, that you, sh you know, you shared that, that story, which is heartbreaking, about Frank. And so those kinds of things, when you're isolated, you're living your lives, but you're aging in place and you're getting older, these things will be, um, when you're isolated and you're not accessing regular mainstream aging services, this could be a problem because we don't have marriage yet in our lifetime probably we hope but we don't have it yet and so without any of those um, sort of things in place legal things in place we really have to be careful so social isolation can be part of the problem um, obviously sometimes mental health issues depression um, chronic illnesses are also something that we in the LGBT community see uh, obviously um, uh, there is, of course, HIV over 50. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's many of many of our community in our community are living now with HIV, and 
how are we doing that with all the effects now of the the meds that they folks have been on and what do you what does that look like and how are our providers really helping us age with all of the things that are specific to our community so I would say that those are things that are going to be on the radar more and more as we age the boomers are coming up we're not going to go back in the closet and we're going to want to access mainstream services and they're going to want to make sure that really who we are uh, in mainstream aging network is going to be you know respectful of our relationships and also in tune and sensitive to the needs that we have right and uh, you know just in, in as an add-on there you know are all of these concerns just like we have in our schools of bullying and you know anytime right. if you are if you are not living at home or just having to access services and interact in society, you are making yourself susceptible to, right. um, you know, hate crimes and all of the fears of being yes. a social person and coming out of that isolation. So the reason why we've chosen the isolation is because of all of these, you know, problems. And, um, you know, LGBT people also, if they are partnered, aren't getting uh, any of the social security or other federal Correct. benefits that that's uh, that yet to are, happen that happen with the regular population now again the obama administration has been good and one thing that they have done which is they have now are letting the states decide spousal impoverishment which is that if in fact your partner um, goes into a nursing home they will not come after your asset because if in fact you have a civil union that will be respected so again there are things that are happening that are a little bit more in place that are not going to be such big barriers but but we have a long way to go and it's got to be more and more on our radar as we age right and all of these things aren't just legal concerns it's, no. it's society you know as I mentioned right. the bullying it could be just you know that the staff isn't using your preferred name you know, they, they the staff at a facility might say that they only want to uh, recognize you by your legal name, which could be Absolutely. very uncomfortable for you. Well, and, and Sage, which is out of New York, uh, the, their main office, just did a really wonderful um, uh, policy manual that talks about transgender aging and what some of the priorities were going to be to look at policies and procedures that hopefully mainstream, again, mainstream aging services will look at seriously and look to how we can incorporate those into what we already have within our agencies to be more sensitive, to be more, um, you know, accepting, and to to really start to look at competency trainings and and to talk about you know when uh, the those on the front lines are going to be facing those of us who are coming into their facilities that we are treated with the utmost respect that we deserve. Right. So again, both for the general population you accessing services as well as for the uh, the caregivers and Correct. and employees at these various agencies and organizations there are things that we can do to make right. it better and Correct. there is good care available there are great services available you know through the city um, through other places and you can you know each of us can do a lot uh, to get ourselves more comfortable with what to expect when we go into these. Well, and we hope so. I mean, there, I'm part of a task force that's the Chicago Task Force on LGBT Aging. It's a very loose group of many, many of the mainstream um, agencies, Council for Jewish Elderly, Rush uh, Hospitals are part of the um, the consortium. I mean, we have the city, of course, is, is a big player, the Department of Public Health, but also many of the other private agencies that Little Brothers, you know, all these different agencies in mainstream aging are really trying to get a better handle on how our how we are all going to age and how we're aging now the senior population now the older lgbt population now has a different they grew up when it was different to be gay and so it's it's a different way in which they're going to identify it's a different way in which they're going to tell the case manager who comes for meals on wheels whether or not the woman who's living with you is not your cousin or your sister. There, it's going to be different, uh, and yet we have to be ready to take on both that that population of the aging, uh, the senior who's older now in their 80s and 70s, 80s, 90s, and the senior who is now 60 or mm -hmm. 65. It, you know, it's a it's a generational thing that has changed us, so we have to be sensitive to all of that. We do invite your calls yes, uh, um, on the LGBT hotline here. 312-738-1060. Bob is 
an LGBT senior and he is excited to take your call. So please, uh, please feel free call. to call in. Um, so you've mentioned several um, yes. national resources that have become available and um, and you know on this program with with gay liberation network i mean you know that we do not hold our tongue to uh to mm -hmm. calling out what more needs to be done by politicians and you know definitely in this case the thing that more needs to be done yes are you know marriage and, and federal Absolutely. recognition Absolutely. And, and social security benefits for right. all of our partnerships um as but that said, as an individual LGBT, there have been a lot of things that um, Kathleen Sebelius and uh, yes. the Obama administration have taken on, and so we're just going to go through some of those items yeah. to keep the people, everyone, informed of the fact that there there are uh, um, good opportunities available out there for you, and uh, and and you can find people that are going to uh, to embrace you. Some of the major things that have happened. Um, all right. First of all, just a you know verbal advocacy yes. by CMS, the C the Centers, Centers for Medicaid Medicare. and Medicare mm -hmm. Services, about the issue of we have you know uh, uh, elderly folks that are uh, coming to us from with a different sexuality, a different gender identity, right. and what are we going to do about it? And they're just at least they're talking about that. They have also um, started to fund. Uh, some services for that uh, sage be, has been a large uh, benefit they've started they've true. started this uh, lgbt resource yes. center the lgbt health and aging center which is actually now uh, sort of institutionalizing our lgbt aging issues which is very important because as you mentioned funding it's at the core of what we need in order to get our word and to get our statistics out there um also uh there have they have made uh, changes to the rules of uh, the Department of HUD for housing and urban development, yes. which controls the rules of all housing nationwide, and yes. has basically at this point made made uh, LGBT anti discrimination laws. Correct. So very much the exact same as what you encounter for race um, and disability uh, across the country. Right. And so if you are encountering any kind of discrimination, there Absolutely. is, there is a, uh, an open uh, door in the, in the uh, federal government to hear yeah. your complaint. Um, no matter what, no matter if you live in rural Louisiana or here in the city of Chicago, wherever yeah. they, they want to hear from you, if you are experiencing uh, discrimination because you are gay or trans, bisexual, etc. Um, uh, there has been a change to hospital visitation uh, in the last couple of Correct. years. That again was the Obama administration and uh, because of that awful case in Florida, the two lesbians who were on a cruise, they, one woman got very, very ill, she wasn't allowed to see her partner and from that case sort of became pivotal to change how we can do hospital visitation. So you uh, so you have the good. right you have the right yes. to name who it is you, yes. that you are allowing to visit you, um, and that is true in a nursing home as well as a hospital setting. Um, yeah, I, I want to just go back a quick minute though to mm -hmm. talking about housing because of course in Chicago we have this this kind of, kind of exciting thing that's happening soon, which is we're going to be having LGBT aging uh, friendly, a LGBT friendly housing that's going to be being built next to the center on Halstead. So uh, everything, in fact, I just read today in the Windy City Times that we're apparently getting everything in place as far as the funding goes, and the, um, they're going to be working on breaking ground next year, 2013, so that by the spring of, of 2014, there will be 69 units uh, available for housing, studios, one bedrooms, uh, apartments, uh, right next door. It's the old police station right next to the center on Halstead. They're on Addison and Halstead. So, there are really wonderful things happening. It sounds like we'll be again sort of a beacon of hope of, of making sure that there is not just talking about what we can do. We have to start doing many more things uh, concretely, I think, to show that there are options and, and ways in which we can house those of us who are aging in our communities and want to stay in our communities and stay healthy. That's really the key. Right. Um, we're waiting for you, calls. We, yeah, we're we're <laughs> welcome to take your calls. Um, we, uh, you know, some of the some of the things for um, 
you know, LGBT elderly to to get in. in there's there's basically there's social organizations yes. out there. There's a group called Prime Timers for Gay Men. That's right. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's you know. Sage there's, is there's, doing a lot of programming there around different uh, gatherings. They'll have different dances, and you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things that they're doing besides the lunches, which are again Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, mm -hmm. But they have all kinds of activities and programs. I don't know if there's anything going on at the city of Chicago uh, Department of Aging that's specific to LGBT folks. We don't have specific to LGBT folks. Obviously, I'm at the Levy Center, so come see me. Um, <laughs> you yeah. know, if there's any ever a problem, actually, you can always call me. I'd be happy to be a resource for folks out there. And these are community so, centers. You can start your own group. You're right. Um, right. You know, you can start your own activity. You can do a play together, whatever it is yeah. that... Um, so uh, that's important just to get out and socialize and realize that there are, realize what your networks are out there. Um, we talked a little bit about legal documents. Insurance, uh, you, because we do not have, generally have as strong of family ties and, um, right. and uh, progeny as uh, the general population, mm -hmm. We, uh, you know, it is important and smart to, you know, get and invest in disability insurance so that you have right. income to be able to pay someone to help take care of you. Right. Um, as well as long-term care insurance if you would need to be, uh, you know, to, to be cared for for a long period of time. And um, those two items are very important. Yeah, I, I think those are some things that are just uh, what you would look at as you age in place just in general. But for us, again, until we have marriage or until we're able to really have the relationships that we're involved in be fully acknowledged and realized, I think you want to make sure that those things are done uh, in a more formal way. So that usually means more legal, that you make sure that they're, you know, you have them all with you, you have your paperwork with you, have it ready, keep it in a safe place. I mean, those are the kinds of things that you want to make sure to have happen, um, you know. You know, the legal documents um, for if you are partnered, you know, a health care power of attorney is, is very useful, especially if you're traveling outside of the state of Illinois sure. um, where there where there's at least a civil union law in right. place. But, um, you know, if you're traveling anywhere, you want to uh, basically carry this in your suitcase, which is what I do. Yeah. Um, my health care power of attorney with my husband and yeah. That way we can present it at any point that we might need um, you know, or, and, I, and not be able to speak for ourselves. Exactly. But I want to give a shout out, though, to the, to, to the seniors who are out there that maybe do are not partnered but have close uh, friends who are like their family. Because, you know, that's the other thing is we... As we know, our in the LGBT community, we have not just our own physical family. We have our family of choice. So it's very important that we are they are respected and that we can, in essence, make sure that they have, if they're the ones that are closest to us because we're not partnered, that they can help make sure that in their caregiving and in the ways that they can care for us, they're acknowledged. Uh, we're going to go quick again to the um, pages and... Sorry, let time go away from us here. Here are uh, resources that we have, uh, that you have available to you uh, right here in the city of Chicago. Please check them out, cityofchicago.gov, I believe, G-O-V, and uh, centeronhalstead.org at 3656 North Halstead. And the next page is information because this is a community thing. You can start within your own professional and industrial, in, you know, industry organization, your union. You can start teaching each other how it is that we want to treat our sexuality and uh, how we want to treat uh, people of different uh, gender identities uh, in this community. Please come out and see Gay Liberation Network at Mar North Halstead Market Days. You can also volunteer to uh, work in, at the uh, booth on our website. Our next meeting is the first Wednesday of August, August 1st, 7 p.m. We are at Burger Park Cultural Center. It is just off the uh, Red Line Granville stop. And the next GLN TV show is right here at 6.30 p.m. Friday, August 10th. We look forward to having you join us. Thanks. It was great. You were wonderful.
You're very good.